Welcome to another Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm your host, Nikki Bacarel D'Angelo. One of my most recent videos was named The Freight Train Coming At Ya. <laughs> and I think that's it. It was something like that. It was an inside joke to myself. Because after trying to play 4.0 for so long and having so few actual playthroughs work for me, I really started to think that this is going to be like 3.18. And there's so much going into 4.0. I mean, we have a new ship. Yay, more money to be spent. We have server meshing. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that we were talking about object container streaming, and we were talking about persistence, and then we were talking about all of our gear being physicalized, and now we're talking about server meshing, which is supposed to be the beginning of making everything more playable. You know, server meshing leads to dynamic server meshing, leads to something else I don't know about. And that's going to make our time in the verse. That's going to make things like server errors and losing missions a thing of the past. Moving the mission architecture to a separate server, that's also part of 4.0. And there's a lot more. So there's so much that was supposed to be jammed in here and a lot of it like engineering removed that you have to think that we need to give them a little bit of leeway, but do we? If CIG releases it in the current state that it's in right now, it's going to be a debacle. And the only reason they would release it is so people can't say that they said it would be out at this time and it wasn't. Now we know this is an alpha and with alpha gameplay with anything that is in early access, there are going to be errors all over the place. But some of these errors, like elevators that don't work and getting stuck on a train, can ruin your whole day. After you set everything up and try to get from A to B, you're stuck. Now, CIG is introducing something new to this build, the latest build, and you spawn in your hangar, your hangar. Not the last hangar that you were in, but your hangar. If you go somewhere else and you log out there, you will not spawn in your hangar in that location. You'll spawn in your ha habitat or whatever it is. Now this I find to be very interesting. There were times in the past when we had our hangar module, they talked about other rooms off of it, like an office a place to sleep, a place to eat, a armory, uh, even a shooting range. And those things just never came to pass. But I'm wondering if this is something that will be the beginning of some of those modules coming in. So I've had a couple of major issues in this build that caused me not to even being able to start the game. And the first one was, I can't run it in Vulcan right now. And that might be a known issue. I don't know. I didn't read the patch notes. But even if I clear my cache, it just will not run. So I have to run in DirectX. Not bad, it runs almost the same, kind of. My card runs it better on Vulkan, the 7900 XTX. Needless to say, that took me about a half hour of tweaking this morning, which cut my time to actually do this video. And then I had the issue of stupid master modes. The keyboard setup, the throttle HOTUS setup I have, it will not activate anything to do with quantum mode in the way I used to. So I played with that for a while and it just didn't work. And I'm a little annoyed with that, but I got past it. And then I need to talk about the giant pink elephant in the room, the constellation. Now this is the phoenix and I'm going to start off by saying this. This is one of the first ships I fell in love with. I think the Connie actually was instrumental in helping CIG get over the hump or actually destroy their goal in their initial Kickstarter. It's a great ship. But is it really that great or is it just great on paper? In my opinion, it's great on paper. There are awesome constellations out there like the Taurus, the Aquila. I even like the Andromeda. But this was supposed to be the luxury model, and I fell in love with it for that. But in the design and the development of this ship, I think they went a little bit over the top, trying to get what was kind of, sort of, a joke, and kind of, sort of, 
a realistic goal to put a hot tub inside the ship. And we'll talk about that later. And this is something that's happened with CIG a lot. They go back, they make some fixes to ships. There are fixes to the Constellation in this patch, just like there were fixes to the Carrick. We'll talk about them. And the main reason for that is we have a, a ton of ships that came out long before everything was in place. So in the beginning, just to give us a ship to fly around the verse, they kind of, they kind of developed the ships around an idea instead of around something that was actually in game. And that's giving us a bunch of ships like Aurora, like the Constellation, like the Avenger, and you know, that just, they're, they're still good, but they're not done. The Gold Pass hasn't been completed on them, and some of the elements that worked before just don't work now. So I've been RSI through and through forever, but I, I kind of lost my love for their ships until the Zeus came out. The Zeus is amazing, and I am in love with that ship, and it will probably be my daily driver. I will probably need to have two, a CL and an ES. I really like the ES, but I like the cargo of the CL. It's kind of weird. I, I know that I can make this work, and I will, but I am in love with that ship. It wasn't until the 400i came out that, in my opinion, I know there were ships before it, CIG was actually on the right path. That ship came out out of nowhere. We knew it was kind of coming from leaks, and we had all of our ideas on what it was going to be, but that ship, from stem to stern, from top to bottom, was designed with everything that was in place and everything that CIG knew was coming. Yeah, it's got a long, ugly nose, and the X-1 doesn't like to stay in the hangar that was tailor-made for it, but it's a beautiful ship, and it has a lot going for it. It is truly a luxury ship. And this is something that's been plaguing CIG's original ships, and I don't know if they're ever going to be able to go back and do gold passes on them. In fact, I don't want them to. I, I think at some point, maybe down the line, after everything's out and the crew that's doing ships at this point has the opportunity, they make Mark II versions of them. But that's down the road. And Mark II versions of them that are designed from start to finish with the idea of this is what goes in the ship, this is how the ship is run, and this is what the ship is supposed to do. And then maybe we can get the ships that we envisioned in the past. All right, but 4.0, 4.0, 4. I mean, we've been here for a long time. This is 12 years for me in the verse. It's 11 years of me sporadically doing videos. And I feel like we're finally in the home stretch. That doesn't mean that the game is gonna come out. It means that once server meshing is in, and they start working on dynamic server meshing, I think it clears the way for the planetary design teams or star system design teams to start kicking butt on getting out those star systems. Nix looks 50% done, maybe more. It is very possible we could have Nix next year and possibly Castra shortly after that. I'm very excited for where we are going now. And I can't wait to see how much more we have waiting in the wings at the different events that they're going to have next year. So I'm going to shove my criticism aside for a little bit, and I'm going to talk about the things I do like. There are a few things that I said would never get old, and this is going to be a new one. They started off with me landing and walking around Orison, and yes, frame rates were horrible, and it took forever to get down to Orson and back up out of the atmosphere, but I still think it's one of the most beautiful places in the Star Citizen verse today. But jump holes? I, I can't get enough of this. The music, the excitement, the having to navigate your way through it, it, it just is one of those things in gaming that has made me just go, wow. 
and I love doing this part of it. So a minute of this video is going to be just flying through it. And I've taken three ships through this now. The 400i, I took the Mercury Star Runner, and now this. Now, of course, if you were with me, the Mercury Star Runner exploded the minute we exited. And then I went back and I went through it again and exploded the minute I tried to touch down on Bloom. But we have a much better result this time. I'm extremely excited that this is what CIG came up with. I love the fact that you have to have some skill, but not overly skill-oriented getting through the wormhole. It really means that the gameplay that we have when we find those rogue wormholes in the future, it's, it's going to be exciting. So I took my Constellation Phoenix all the way out to Bloom and found a nice place in the land of a thousand million trillion lakes to just set down. Now when I had taken off, there was a lynx in my hangar. It's not there anymore. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> this is another thing that pisses me off about vehicles and Star Citizen and the ships that are supposed to carry them. It's just not done. And that is wrong <laughs> at 11 years. I said I was going to get rid of the salt. I didn't. There will be some salt in this review. This is a luxury ship. It's a luxury vessel. And the question is, who is it a luxury vessel for? The design elements in this ship are all over the place. There is nothing luxury about the front end of the ship. And, you know, these areas were supposed to be modular and you can change them out for different things like scanning and combat, whatever. You move into the crew quarters and, yeah, the table works and a couple of other things work. But there's no real galley here. No place for people to eat. It's... Okay. Oh, there's a table. You could eat, but there's nowhere to cook. I'm sure that will be addressed in the future. But they did fix something that was not here. You could access your internal storage, and there's five of these different places to store. So five lockers, each with about one CU. Now, this is broken a little bit. I put one of my weapons over here. That's my salvaging gear. All right, this is the only toilet on the whole ship makes no sense and there is nothing luxury about that whatsoever now the beds i have to give them these are the crew beds they serve a purpose and they're also for escape pods for the crew there's none for any of the guests just the crew i have little problems with these bedrooms they are small and they are purpose-built and they are luxurious there's room for six people on this ship, but there's two, three, four, five, six. Are there room for six? There's room for four people on this ship. There's two beds and a double bed, four people, but there's six chairs. And again, there's six chairs. I love the bar. The bar is the best part of the ship. Wonderful, gorgeous. The sitting area, the table, gorgeous, wonderful. You can't use any of this. If I did, my character would be constantly falling over drunk. A lot of liquor. It's going to be fun trying to keep that stocked. This area I don't have an issue with. I think it's open. You need to have access to all of these windows. This space over here is useless. There's no luxurious bathroom here, but we're wasting space. And those two seats are useless because you are only carrying four people. You're carrying a couple in the main room over there and two people in the other two rooms. I love these windows. They are just like windows on spaceships. What is CIG thinking not giving us more of these? Nice bed, nice double bed. And of course, room for all of yep, your components. And I understand in limited ship space why some of this stuff would be in the main cabin area. It, it honestly only makes sense because they had to be added in after the ship was concepted, designed, built, and redesigned multiple times. But still, I understand why it would be here. Not bad. This area is the engineering area. Nice. You know, they have the fuses in there. 
And of course, there's our Archimedes. All right, let's go back. Let's see if we can get on this elevator over here and go downstairs. This is where I realize my Lynx is gone. I was going to drive around the planet, but yeah, it's gone. And it was down here after I took off. I know it was. It's a nice little cargo area. I think it's more than enough to carry what you need to. But on a luxurious ship like this, I think the whole money-making portion of this is luxury transport. I would have put the galley down there. I would have done something different. I would have had a smaller storage area. But too many of our citizens in the Star Citizen gaming universe want to have every ship do everything. And I think a luxury sh ship should deliver luxury, not goods between places. Get a raft. Get something else that's going to be your delivery ship. So... I know Morphala just does this, and he's much better at it than me, but I would have gotten rid of those two seats. And I would have also either shrunk or gotten rid of the hot tub to make it a more luxurious vessel. And maybe made the hot tub smaller just to fit four people. I don't know. But I am really into the 400i. I think that's luxury done well. And because I love RSI so much... I wish, and I, I know I don't want them to do it right now because I want other things in the game. But I wish they would go back and rethink this vessel. Because I really don't think it knows what it wants to be. It's obviously saying that the crew is not part of the luxury because there's two separate spaces. One that's crew oriented and one that's luxury oriented. And the luxury oriented one is missing... A dining experience like where do you where does the food get cooked it's not gonna get cooked up front and where do they go to the bathroom and get ready like there's so many elements missing from here but this space right here I love it I mean I'll shut up now because that space is gorgeous this over here four people four beds and you got six seats don't tell me uh, they're gonna hot rack no this is a luxury ship Go, go and watch Below Deck, and you'll understand why I'm a little bit annoyed with this. But doesn't stop me from hoping and praying that this could be better. And there's your hot tub. Uh, yeah, whatever. Okay? A hot tub on a spaceship. What the hell? <laughs> right? Our other ships will get updates as 4.0 gets nearer and nearer, and also as it moves into 4.1, 4.2, whatever. We'll do more of those videos when we see the changes. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button below. If you're looking to subscribe to Star Citizen, there's a referral code below that will get you 5,000 extra UEC and possible some goodies. If you are a subscriber or have recently subscribed, please click the bell-shaped icon below so you get notified of all my future videos. And with that said, you all be safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for watching my videos. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking in the button in the upper left. You can support the channel by going to Patreon by clicking the button in the upper right. On the left, you'll see my latest video, and on the right, you'll see a video that YouTube thinks you will like.